Greetings, friend, entrepreneur, and fellow business builder. I'm marketing master Jim Ackerman, and this is a special edition of Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads. Special because it's the Super Bowl edition of this program. And whether you like the game or not, I can say this about the advertisers. They go all out spending all kinds of money on what happens before, during, and after the Super Bowl, and we're gonna critique their efforts, not from an aesthetics or entertaining point of view, although that'll come play into it, but also from a, a marketing effectiveness point of view. With me today, my son, Dave Ackerman, also a YouTuber and uh, kind of a video producer on his own right, and by phone we have my other son, Joel Ackerman, also YouTuber extraordinaire, has generated literally tens of millions of views between the two of these guys together. We'll have Joel on a little bit later, but Dave, welcome to the program. Good to be here. It's always fun to not just watch the Super Bowl, but um, you know, the, all, the, all the ads in between never fail to uh, you know, go all out at least, if not entertain. There was good and bad this year. Okay, so we're gonna talk first of all about the five ads that happened really before the game got underway. There were five of them. The first one was the four double ad followed by a Bud Light ad, a Maserati ad, a Doritos ad, and a Chevy truck ad. Of those five, I thought all of, four of the five were noteworthy for both being good and not so good, okay? The first one I thought was the Ford double ad, Dave, because it really pounded home the idea that we get almost double the gas mileage. So this was the Ford Fusion ad, and it starts out with a um, uh, uh, lower budget, lower production value, um, commercial talking about how you can get double the gas mileage and then leads right into the second version same almost exact script word for word but where the sets are cooler the actor is more famous and the stunts are more fun and everything's bigger and yeah I agree I think it did a good job of selling that big benefit of better than average gas mileage and which, people care about that yeah. okay the Maserati spot the Maserati ad looked like an independent film trailer and then suddenly it's Maserati and to me that was a huge miss. Maserati does not speak to, I mean you have independent film and, it, it's all, and all the messaging was about go it alone and you see it was very populous and you see that kind of language in you know Apple computers or something like that but then it's Maserati and it's a car made for millionaires. And I just found it very, I, I mean, the first part was, I was going, okay, what th is this about? And when I found out it was for Maserati, Maseratis are really cool, but it was just like, I think Maserati was about? trying to play on the fact that it was Maserati. And that's, that's what they were going for. And frankly, I agree with you. I thought it was terrible. It goes down as a big ugly. Uh, Doritos Time Machine ad. Um, I love the Doritos campaign in general. I love that filmmakers can submit stuff. I've had many friends submit um, uh, commercials for the Doritos campaign. Uh, this one was just okay to me. I, I just didn't think it was that funny. The cool thing about the Doritos campaign is it front loads um, all the interaction so much that they can't lose. They always get something that's pretty funny. This one playing on kids and, and their interactions and imagination and stuff. The thing I didn't like about this one is that it didn't make you want Doritos all that much. Yeah, the guy gives up his Doritos to go on this time machine thing, but it wasn't all that compelling. The point we want to make though with Doritos, and it came back later with a nice ad in the fourth quarter, uh, that talked about the uh, Lone Ranger thing, and that one I thought was much better. But the thing about the Doritos series is that they, like Dave says, they front end load it, you get a contest up front, there's a lot of Doritos commercials that are made, people watch these things, they go online, on YouTube, they vote, and the winners get to go on the Super Bowl. They only had two of them la this year, I think they had three or four last year, but the concept of the process I think is a great melding well, of the social media and the Super Dor Bowl. Doritos, better use of your money. Doritos is, I mean, there are few chip brands cooler than Doritos. And that's what a lot of these ads are about. Uh, a lot of these ads have the goal of creating um, an interactive brand experience or, or just brand ambassadors, people who believe in that brand. And when I think of cool chips, 
for a long time, Doritos has been doing stuff to put them in that category of like, what makes a party? What's a fun, I mean, you know, the fact that they wind up in a taco shell and Taco Bell, Doritos does a lot right when it comes to being a cool brand. And whether their commercials are funny or not, they're always, you know, they're usually trying to be. But I think Doritos wins in my book for just, um, you know, just this whole campaign yep. To, yep. to capture attention and be cool. Good. The last one was the uh, Chevy ad with the eligible bachelor, the bull in the back, said nothing about the truck. It didn't make you think that, gee whiz, uh, Chevy's a better way, way to tow your bull in the back of the truck than any other truck. I thought it was bad. The master says, that one's ugly. And on that sorry note, you enjoy the first half. We'll be back at halftime with more commentary, and we'll bring uh, Joel in on that.